Come. Place. Yeah. Sit. Down. Yes, yes. Hey guys, uh, Ken here with Tax Canine. I wanted to talk to you, I'm doing a couple videos on muzzle training for some of my clients. Um, and this video isn't about muzzle training, this is really more directed towards uh, the trainers here. Um, one of the things that I, I use the muzzle for, I actually muzzle condition almost every dog that comes in here. Why? Because the chances of the, and the likelihood of this dog having to have a muzzle on sometime in its life uh, is going to be pretty good. Be it at the groomer, uh, be it at the vet when they have to have a procedure that isn't pleasant. Um, you know, safety is always a protocol for all these places. They're going to just slap the muzzle on. They don't have time to condition the muzzle. And so it makes it an awkward and even more stressful experience. So the way I utilize the muzzle in my training protocols is that every time I mark a behavior, you know, as we're building up our, our marking, I use the muzzle as a way to feed the treat. I don't feed it from my hand like this, oh yes, or even this way, yes. I might every once in a while when I don't have the muzzle handy, but I utilize the muzzle as the bowl. Um, so I get a nice glove like this. You can see it's got some mush on it. I use some soft jerky treats like, like uh, Bill Jack's liver treats. I smush it up. And then what I do is I put the muzzle in my hand and I squish it into the, into the muzzle. It totally disintegrates and breaks down. It just turns into a pile of mush. And then what I do is then I turn around and I ask the dog to do a command. Now before I do that, I've always got the dog under control, all right? Any dog that's in, in the facility for training isn't there because they're a good boy, all right? Some may need some shaping, but the chances, um, we wanna set some protocols to limit any chance of them making a poor choice uh, or putting us in jeopardy. So always have control of the dog. And then I also have a dominant dog collar. You can kind of see through her hair, um, it's a dominant dog collar that she's on. It's just a glorified slip lead is all it is. And so I utilize the dominant dog collar to maintain control should I need to, need to uh, in any instance. Um, but before I ever introduce a prong collar, before I ever introduce any other tool, the dog is always conditioned on a slip lead first uh, to understand pressure and release. Then when I apply those tools, those tools are far less harsh, uh, much more effective in the communication, and, um, uh, and, and the dog's more open to Util utilizing those tools and let's be quite honest with you even though we provide the tools we know a lot of our clients don't end up using the tools all the time so let's condition the dog on the most basic tool that 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 uh, any owner is going to typically have or any vet or a uh, groomer is going to use and that's just a slip leader uh, so uh, basically all i do is i put the treat i get a work glove like this push the treat in and then all of a sudden I'll turn around and I'll grab my lead just in case and I'll go truffles, truffles, come. Yes, 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 yes. Truffle place. Yes, 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 yes. Now, there's something else I'm doing right now, guys. I'm using spatial pressure as a, a tool, both in a positive and a negative sense. We can use spatial pressure by going go, 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 you know, and pushing into there in a negative sense, or we can use it in a positive sense. What happens is a lot of dogs, obviously, we know they get collar shy. We grab them like this, stop that, you know. Um, dogs have, a, have an apprehension to hands coming down. So that approach, if I approach the dog like this, almost kind of like a bowling, right? If I approach the dog underneath, it's less uh, offensive to the dog, um, and then there's always a reward. Now I can lean back when I ask the dog to do something, meaning I'm releasing the pressure. So stoffy or uh, truffles come. Yes. Truffle sit. Yes, good girl. Yes. 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 Remove the treat, step back, release the pressure, and then I just turn around and go truff. Place. Yes, yes. So um, before, so just to summarize, um, you can stack commands or stack training protocols uh, to help increase efficiency so you get the most out of every training session. Um, you can still use a positive means um, while introducing tools that might seem like um, they're less receptive, uh, but in the end will be very effective for the dog. 
uh, and this is how we can we can help benefit the dog in future situations when we're not present or we don't have the ability nor do does our client have the ability or the patient to muzzle train a dog or other other pet professionals that don't have the time they're just going to abrasively put the muzzle on the dog so utilize this not necessarily for just your bite dog cases or your nippers or anything like that but use it as a training tool for every dog and you'll find um, the dog to be much more receptive to not only the muzzle uh, but more receptive to the commands and more willing to be engaged with you in a in a closer context so uh, just some tips um, I'd like to know how you guys do your training techniques and how you increase your efficiency um, because I, I find that if we can stack or we can we can add uh, more commands into our repetition um, we, we will get a better performance out of it uh, let me know what your thoughts are guys I appreciate it this is Ken Tags Canine come on let's go trust oh my god this is a good girl huh